and I'm doing a two-year master's program in uh, Sonic Arts and we are presently in the electronic music studios. Um, my name is Sonia Gonzalez. I am from Austin, Texas and uh, I am doing the full-time one-year uh, Sonic Arts music master's program. Uh, my name is Henrik. I'm a third-year music computing student at Goldsmiths. Um, so, I'm Guy. I'm uh, doing one master's in Sonic Arts. Um, I came here from Israel to do this master's, um, mainly working uh, in between music technology and performance and uh, augmented uh, instruments and new, basically new musical tools and em emerging technologies, incorporating it into performance and really um, Again, augmenting our production capabilities, performance capabilities, etc. I am curious about patterns. Um, I like patterns in nature, um, very simple kind of patterns. So that's a lot of a lot of the sound pieces that I create um, are around patterns. I like loops, um, and so the I've definitely worked in in kind of more analog situations before, but this is. Um, Understanding Maxim SP has been a big reason why I came to Goldsmiths. They have a whole module over it. Um, and so now I'm getting into the computer kind of stuff with patterns. So I'm curious about um, beat frequencies and um, oscillations that happen. Um, there's a few different kind of scientific things that happen when you hear varying types of oscillations or frequencies um, that, you know, our brains just kind of pick up. Um, and so I'm fascinated with that. Um, so I've, I did my bachelor in performance and uh, when I did my bachelor, I started getting more and more into music technology, mainly using Ableton Live and Max MSP. And when I came here um, to study at Goldsmiths, I just um, transitioned all my work from being performance-based to actually code-based and really building the tools that I want, building the tools that, that enable the, this augmentation that really changed the way we perceive different aspects of music. Um, my main uh, focus is on rhythm and on a perception of rhythm and entrainment of rhythm so it's more uh, theoretical based but I'm trying to relate that into actual performative aspects and really um, again augment production capabilities so we don't just get the same old boring music just make something new out of what we already know of in music. So my project is basically just a um just it's it, I think it's like a big science project, um, but it's it's a really fascinating thing fascinating thing to see. So I'm I'm kind of messing around with frequencies that happen um, whenever two similar frequencies are playing, but then I'm also creating a visual element for that. Um, there's also something visually that happens. Um, it's called moray patterns, and so. Sonically, you know, you have two patterns that you're playing with. Um, visually, more is, is kind of the same idea. You have two patterns, and then when they overlap, um, there's a third kind of pattern that happens. So I just interplaying between patterns that we hear and that we, um, that we see is kind of the, the reason why I started this project. Well, for my third year project, my major project, I wanted to work with this clavier, the piano, um, sort of extend it through electronics. So that's why I really have this setup here. Um, I'm using the MIDI capabilities of this piano, running it through my interface and the computer, and to sort of create a sonic extension of the piano itself, because that's really what I'm interested in in my work. I'm using sort of classical instruments like the piano, which I really like. Um, it's kind of the main inspiration behind my uh, major project piece was really the um, sort of the just the sound of the piano. I'm working on a few different projects. Um, I work with different medias. Um, I work with uh, my voice quite a lot, and I work with electronics. My work is a lot about um, textures and contrasts. So I use different genres and I mix them together, and I do a lot of field recordings that are then manipulated into 
um, textures with a lot of different uh, sounds and frequencies into them. Um, and then I contrast that with my vocals and so I have an element of um, electronics and an element of um, a bit something that's a bit more um, raw and natural. And then this chorus has pushed me towards um, audiovisual work. Um, I've actually started creating my own uh, visuals using uh, different softwares. Uh, started with uh, After Effects, Adobe After Effects, and then um, worked with a bit of 3D modeling. Um, so I'm exploring the world of 3D animation right now, and having that respond to my music is kind of what I'm working towards. So, um, and I work with photography quite a lot as well, so I'm trying to bring all of those audio-visual aspects together. That's my aim. Um, the, my main intention and inspiration comes from my own experience as a performer, and it's, it started from not having the tools that I wanted to play with, and not having the software capabilities react the way I want it to react. And so I spent the better part of the last seven years sort of reworking pieces, bits, bits and pieces of software that mainly able to live um, until I came to the conclusion that everything works better in a coding environment and just start building my own tools from scratch. And um, I, I just started throwing my tools around, sending it, posting it online. Um, posting it in, inside the Goldsmiths community, inside the Sonic Art community, and um, especially with Sonic Arts people, but with music computing people as well, and in, in the studios and in the Goldsmiths recording studios, and just went off from there. I mean, it started just not having my own ideas, not being able to express my own ideas, and not having the tools for that. So I built them, and then they came my own project for the moment at least. I've been doing a lot of collaborations but actually there's this one big thing inside of me that I want to be able to do everything from A to Z um, and that involves the entire creative process and if that means that I need to make my own visuals and if that means that I need to make their own music and then perform it and then write it and then like all of those things then Technology is the key for that for me for the moment. There are a lot of you know patterns that happen in science, but I really like um, Marianne Amache. She's a big sound artist that was in New York um, that influenced a lot of the the work that I've done. Um, but you know, a, I really there was a a um, there was a module called uh, Studio uh, Sound Agendas that uh, John Drever has, and I learned a lot about the music concrete um, artists that came out of the 50s and 60s in Paris, and so kind of found sounds in John Cage and, and, and understanding, um, you know, that, that sounds are around us and, and, you know, that we just need to pay attention to them has been a, a big influence in, in a lot of the projects that I've done. So, um, for example, I have in my project, I have a, a state which reacts to what the user is playing, what notes the user is playing, and then depending on what those notes are, the program spits out different rhythms and different notes and different sounds. So it's a way of interpreting the data that is sent from the piano to the computer and then doing different things with that, processing it in different ways. Uh, m my first and main instrument is drums and I started by just studying performance and after studying performance for the better part of 15 years I just figured that it's underrepresented the complexity of rhythm itself as a whole as a body of work that's detached from music that's I mean not part of the musical theory side that we study in Western society and um, after studying with a few master teachers, um, mainly Efrain Toro from Puerto Rico um, and my own teacher back from Israel, uh, Roni Holland, um, we just came to realize that it's underrepresented and music technology could help us augment or just make simple the access that producers, music musicians and performers have to very deep concepts of rhythm which basically encompasses everything from the circadian rhythms of the motion of the planets um, and our bodily rhythms 
all the way down to the micro level of cellular movement and quantum mechanics. And oddly enough, through my research, I found a very strong correlation between the tiny and the, the micro and the macro, the tiny and the infinitely large, and really created tools that enable me rep to better represent that through software and performance, because that's the main component of what I wanted to do. For this project, the key influence has been uh, the piano work that uh, Sakamoto has been doing, Richie Sakamoto, specifically the last album, Async. So sort of the relationship between electronic sound and acoustic sounds and how they kind of blend together to create something. Well, what I really like about these studios is that even though everyone's working in their own section, you still there's still a lot of overlap and you're still kind of aware of what other people are doing. Um, and I, I've definitely collaborated with people here on different projects and um, actually just today um, with my classmate, um, we started collaborating uh, on something and it's, it's, it's great because there's a lot of things that I maybe struggle more with and then we're cre like creating something different together and hopefully that creates a balance and it, it, like that's what collaboration is about. Actually, I think just in Goldsmiths in general, there's there's a lot of uh, interdisciplinarity like within the departments and that's something that I admire so much here because, you know, not mixing, you know, computer science with music to me is is, is, is such a shame and, and they're doing this here. We have, we have all of this uh, intersectionality and the same with the film and the same with a with a with a theatre department, and even with um, forensic architecture is something that you know we can involve in as well. So there's a lot of interdis interdisciplinary collaboration within the university anyway. There is a lot of visual aspect to my work. Um, that was a really a, a couple of the modules that I've taken here have have really opened me up to that. I I wasn't really thinking about that before, but the software really allows for that to happen. Um, but also, you know, some of my teachers have been really instrumental in, in introducing a visual aspect to it. And I think, you know, it, it kind of plays into this organic idea of like having patterns around, you know, we, we and I think technology does a really good job of, of mixing the two senses. And, and, and you know, whereas before a lot of the sound artists um, from before just kind of thought in sonic terms, I think technology and you know, software programs like Max are really great to, to bringing more of your senses, involving more of your senses. Um, so that, you know, I, I, it, it, I didn't start out that way, but, uh, but it's definitely evolved into that because of the resources and the, and the software. Yeah, so this project is based on these different sonic states, and each state sort of has a different sonic identity. And um, because they're split up into these different states, I can just continue adding different ideas to this program. So if I want a state which is more, just acts in a different way, um, some, something that's maybe more atmospheric or focuses more on rhythm, I can do that. And then if I want to have another state which focuses more on the spectrality of sound, um, noisiness, then I can do that as well. So um, yeah, it's this project is set up so that I can always add in more ideas and more types of sound even when this project is finished. Um, so I can always continue exploring it further. Um, I think for me, for you know, for my my work, it's 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 definitely a very personal um, approach that I have. I I'm I'm very curious uh, just about discovering these different types of sounds that and patterns that we find. So whatever that evolution is, um, I'm really open to. Um, ideally, it, I think kind of understanding pa patterns in nature and understanding where these patterns are, um, you know, being able to visualize that and kind of have that in a setting where people can interact. So I think, I think generative um, patterns are are also and a lot of like AI patterns are very interesting and so kind of just you know the next step I think will be you know bringing more of those together and and you know because I think the sounds are there and the and the you know the things that we see the patterns that we see are all there and so um, personally it's it's just a big discovery process so evolving from what I'm curious about into you know whatever I'm curious about next will definitely be the the next step but uh, you know 
having this play out in like a big area, just these beautiful patterns everywhere would be, that would be the goal ultimately. This is a really nice environment, especially because um, the staff here are really supportive, particularly Marcus and Emmanuel that work here um, as assistants in the studio. Um, there's been numerous times where I've had problems with setup or, or just, for example, miking the piano, just getting different ideas. Um, everyone here has been really helpful with just giving their opinion and, and being supportive, and that's really helped, especially in development of this project. I'm getting second opinions on things and just all around help. And um, there's just, I guess, there's just so many people, especially at Goldsmiths as well, doing different things with music and in the studios here. There's always someone in the studios doing something different to me. And, and um, it's also really open. You can always talk to people and come in here and, and ask, ask what they're doing and have a little bit of a discussion, which is always nice. Um, and that's, that's really inspiring as well, just getting, getting an idea of what other people are doing. And, and uh, yeah, it's very inspiring.